All right, it's time for an update and forecast on Hurricane Hillary. Right now, it's a Category 3 hurricane with winds around 115 miles per hour. So it has actually decreased in intensity, and we're going to look at why throughout the course of this video. But we're also going to be focusing on the timing of the storm, how much rain is expected, and the winds are expected, with an emphasis on the impacts for California. So looking at the overall path that it's going to take, you notice it comes in right over San Diego, and then it looks to be pushing into the eastern parts of California, so not seeing much impact for the Bay Area or Central Coast. And I think the main thing that I want to emphasize at the start of this video is that it's not going to be a hurricane when it moves into California. It'll be a tropical storm, most likely. And you can actually see the designation just based on the color shading here. Where you see the red, that's where it's expected to be making landfall as a hurricane. So it is going to push into Baja, California. And then blue is where it's tropical storm force. And tropical storm force, you can see the designation right there. That's winds between 39 and 73 miles per hour sustained. Hurricane is 74 to 110. And major hurricane is greater than 110 miles per hour. So it is still a major hurricane. As I mentioned, we have winds right now around 115 miles per hour. Now, because of this hurricane, we have a number of warnings out there. The main one that I'm looking at is the red. That is your tropical storm warning. And that's the first time that's ever been issued for California. And then much more widespread than that, we have the flood watch, which goes basically all the way from the California-Mexico border all the way up almost to South Lake Tahoe there. But you do notice it's mostly on the eastern portions of the state, which is where the heaviest rain and the strongest winds are expected to be. So we can actually click through here and see if we can check out some of the timing on the storm as it moves up. Now one question mark is how far inland it will go on Baja, California. As you know, it's a pretty there's some pretty mountainous terrain around here, and if the hurricane moves too far inland, the mountains will actually kind of make it a lot more disorganized and interfere with the hurricane. And if that happens, it'll be weaker by the time it gets to California. But guaranteed, it is already going to be weaker than it is right now because we're pushing into some cooler water. And then once it gets on land, it's cut off from its energy source, which is that warm water. And then it'll rapidly decrease once it moves into California. So just looking at it right there, See, it goes right off of the coast of California. You can see that counterclockwise flow. And your strongest winds are going to be on the eastern and northeastern side of this tropical cyclone. The reason for that, you can actually think about it. So you're spinning counterclockwise. So you already have some wind velocity from the rotation. But then you're also moving forward. So then you get a little extra push from the overall storm's movement forward. And it is moving north-northwest right now at about 16 miles per hour. So you think you can add that on to those winds on the eastern side of the hurricane. So now let's look at the tropical storm force wind speed probabilities, where you see the purple, that is where we have above a 90% chance of tropical storm winds, so greater than 39 miles per hour sustained. And when I say sustained, keep in mind that your wind gusts are going to be stronger than that. And then by the time it gets into California, we are seeing a little orange there, which is about a 60 to 70% chance of tropical storm winds. So most likely this is still going to be designated as a tropical storm by the time it gets into California. Again, not a hurricane for California. And then it decreases in intensity as it moves in over land and it's cut off from the water. Now let's look at the Greatest flash flood risk over the next three days. So on the far right, you can see day one, so through Sunday morning, we have some of that red showing up, which is moderate, at least 40%. And then the yellow is much wider, that is at least 15%. And I can actually get a pointer on so you can see my mouse a little bit easier. So day two through Monday morning, that's going to be even a little purple right there. So that's high, at least 70% chance. And again, we're looking at flash flood risk right here. And then day through, day three, so through Tuesday morning, that's when the storm has mostly moved off into Nevada and then even farther north than that. So greatest flash flood risk over the next three days. This is the most important one to look at right here. 
where you have the purple, that's going to be at least a 70% chance of flash flood risk. Red is at least 40%, yellow at least 15%, and then marginal at least 5%. You can see that does push a little bit into the central coast right there, but overall you can see where the largest impacts of the storm are expected to be. Now we can actually look at the exact timing on this. So already starting to see a little rainfall down in Southern California. This is some of the moisture moving ahead of the storm. And then as we get into maybe 2 a.m., you start to see more of that yellow showing up, which represents your more moderate rainfall. That goes into 5 a.m. on Sunday, 8 a.m. on Sunday, it's spreading out a bit more. And then we're going to see the storm actually move in as we get to Sunday at 5 p.m. That's where it looks like we're going to have the gustiest winds in Southern California, and then also the most widespread heavy rainfall. I'd say that's around the time and a little bit after that where we have the greatest risk for some flash flooding. That's now looking at Sunday 8 p.m. You can see the low moves up above Victorville and Lancaster, and then you have pretty widespread areas of heavy rainfall. It starts to move up into the Southern Sierra by Sunday 11 p.m. And then by about Monday 2 a.m., there is still definitely some rainfall out there, but it looks like most of that has now kind of calmed down and moved out of California. Although we are going to still see some lingering showers throughout the day Monday because of the moisture that's going to be left over. So now let's look at the total precip that's anticipated. I'll just click all the way through there. Along the coast, should see about one to three inches. For the deserts, I'm going about four to seven inches. And then in the mountains, that's where we could have six to even 10 inches of rain, and especially on the eastern side of the mountains. And it's really the deserts and the mountains that I'm most worried about with this one because some of those places, they're going to be picking up as much rain as they might see in, I don't know, one to two years. They might see that in one to two days. And in some cases, they might get a year's worth of rainfall in 6 to 12 hours. So your soils just can't absorb that much water. And that's where you're most likely going to see some pretty bad flash flooding, some landslides, debris flows, and other risks associated with that. I would say the flash flood risk is greater than the risk from the winds, although we will most likely see some wind damage in addition. Now, one thing I want to point out is right here, we're looking at the GFS. This is the American model, and that's going to be different from the European model. So if we look at the European model, it's pretty similar, but you can see some minor differences here and there, and it's the same story with the track of the hurricane as well. Not all the models agree with exactly where this is going to go and how much rain it's going to bring, although as it gets closer to California, it seems like the models are converging and becoming a bit more confident in what they're saying is going to happen. All those different lines represent different models, and it looks like there's only one that has it pushing more into the Central Valley. The rest, it does look like it's going to push right over the Southern Sierra once it passes over San Diego. So San Diego definitely going to have some strong winds, heavy rain throughout all of Southern California reaching into the Sierra. That's why we have the widespread flood watch. Now, one thing that's at least encouraging is that this storm is now decreasing in intensity. We are still a category three because it's 115 miles per hour, but as this goes into cooler water and then moves in over land, maybe interacts with some of the mountains out there, it's going to rapidly decrease in intensity. And by the time it gets into California, let's see if I can use this tool right here. By the time it gets into California, it's going to cross that boundary where it's now a tropical storm. So just looking at this graphic right here, I think this summarizes better than anything else I could find why this storm, so Hurricane Hillary, is now decreasing in intensity. Let's look at the left panel here. See all that red? That's water that's going to be greater than 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason 80 degrees Fahrenheit is the important number to think about is that's where your storm is going to be strengthening. That's where we quickly saw Hurricane Hillary increase to a Category 3 and then even a Category 4 at one point. I believe the strongest winds I saw were 145 miles per hour. 
But now that we're pushing into this boundary right here and getting into some of the cooler water, we're going below that 80 degree threshold and now the storm is starting to weaken. You could think of warm water above 80 degrees as the fuel for your hurricane, just like your car needs gasoline. Now, as it goes over the cooler water, it decreases in intensity. But one of the reasons that this storm is as strong as it is, is because we are in an El Nino year. So during an El Nino year, you have a lot of warm water rush back to the East Pacific because your trade winds aren't as strong, which pushes some of the warm surface water to the West Pacific. So this shows temperature anomaly on the right here. So what's the temperature of your ocean compared to what it should be this time of the year? And everywhere you see the red, that means the ocean is warmer than average. So warmer water is fuel for your hurricane. So that leads to a stronger storm. And that's why Hurricane Hillary right now, 115 miles per hour, category three. But as it goes into the cooler water, it is going to decrease in intensity. So I just wanna show those warnings one more time. Again, we have a tropical storm warning throughout Southern California. It looks like the, the first kinda, of first portions of the storm, I don't know the better word to say that, are already showing up with some rainfall, but the storm itself looks to be moving in Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. And that's where we are going to have some gusty winds leading to that tropical storm warning there. And then also some heavy rain leading to some flash flooding, which is why we have the flood watch pretty much over all of Eastern California. Now there is, you might also be wondering what that warning is up in the Northwestern portions of the state. That's actually a red flag warning for some of the wildfires that we have going on up there. And I'll do a separate live stream on that in just a moment, but yeah, pretty interesting weather going on across California. You have a tropical storm warning in the south, while at the same time you have some fire danger up in the north. So if you want to hear the details on that, you can stay tuned on Hold Hanley on this channel. And then for more updates on Hurricane Hillary, I'll most likely do another live stream tonight. So you can stay tuned for more information there. So hopefully this video was helpful and thanks for watching.